Hello, humans, and welcome to another episode of Gen X Gamer. I was having my morning coffee here, and at the same time, I was watching the Xbox Partner Review. And I just wanted to talk about it a little bit, you know, give you some reactions, some thoughts I had. You know, here's a, a big picture, you know, for me. Number one, it's nice to see that they're opening up, right? <laughs> that Xbox is finally Xbox and Microsoft are actually treating this business like the, they should have treated it from the very beginning, you know, of, of the Xbox One release. I think they did a great job with the Xbox 360, but we all know what happened with the Xbox One and beyond. Now, ever since uh, the new CEO took over Phil, you know, he's been doing a great job, and I think it's finally becoming what it should have been. Let me say this, just because I'm praising Microsoft right now <laughs> doesn't mean that I'm hating on any other company. I love them all for different reasons. But I, you know, I do like to take time to highlight when I think they're doing things right. And I think something like this is is a step forward for Microsoft, right? And not that they haven't been doing it, but now they're upgrading it, right? They're showing us better and better product. And whether you like it or not, right, for, for many people, Microsoft is going to be the way that they will experience uh, the next generation of gaming simply because the entry price is going to be so low with the Game Pass. Now, whether these games release are, uh, on Game Pass eventually, who knows, right? Some of them, I think, have been announced for Game Pass. Some of them from the, um, from the get-go go on the on the service. But this is just an over, overall look at these games and just to give you my first thoughts on them. And, um, you know, just to tell you, I think this is a step in the right direction. First of all, let's talk about Metal Gear Solid um, <clears throat> Snake Eater. The first in-engine look, I thought it looked pretty good. You know, it's going to live up to the legacy of the game. You know, I think most of us that have grown up with a franchise are going to have to play it just because it is Metal Gear Solid, right? Um, but we'd like to see what goes on from here. But I have to say that what I saw, I liked. You know, I, I do like stealth and, and that type of action sometimes in, in that type of game. So much variety today, you know, but uh, in, in in the world of gaming. But this is the type of game I, I like to play, you know, late at night <laughs> when I have nothing else to do. And I really have time for myself. Uh, whenever, whenever I'm doing stealth action games, I really just want to be left alone. You know what I'm saying? I think most people would agree. But I'm curious about what uh, Snake Eater is going to be like, and and I like I like what I saw so far. Alan Wake Two, um, the new gameplay reveal. I think it was it was great. <laughs> I really liked that. Um, I like what they showed of the game. I like the aesthetics. I like the horror theme. Um, if you guys want to go deeper into it, if you go to Xbox Wire, I'll try to put a link down below. You can see all these stories that I'm talking about. Plus, there's links to exclusive um, interviews, you know, about the series. I may, may want to do the um, one of those, uh, especially on LM Wake 2. The game that will not, will not have any physical media, unfortunately. Um, let me say this. Ark, I've never been a, a fan of. You know, I tried the game out. It just wasn't for me. I really don't have much to say on that. Uh, the one that really surprised me, right? And I have to say, <laughs> I, I, I will have to try out at some point. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Is the the new details of the um, Ichiban uh, Kasuga's upcoming adventure, Like a Dragon, Infinite Wealth, right? <laughs> um, and uh, it was pretty trippy to look at the island. I mean, there is going to be some combat, apparently. There's some ruffians that are going to try to invade your island but the whole thing of, of uh, you know expanding on the on the rpg elements and <clears throat> building out your own island if you will uh with characters and and who you interact with and you know i, I thought it's a different dynamic it's going to bring definitely a different audience for, for for it but i think uh many of the not only the japanese but many of the american hardcore members are going to play this game and it would be something probably my wife would 
watch with me. You know, she doesn't watch a lot of gaming with me, but this would be one of the ones that she would definitely sit there and, and you know, uh, play, not play with me, but just uh, be along for the ride with me. So that might be a couple's game. <clears throat> now, one of the ones that, that I found interesting is, is Still Wakes, The Deep, right? Uh, the whole aesthetic, man, the, the, the voices in the background, the horror. Uh, I dug that, especially that, that it's out there, you know, on this platform, oil rig. And uh, it was creepy as hell. You, something's rolling out of the water. It's, it's tearing up this platform and you're just kind of stuck in there. You know, yeah, uh, you know, I, I like that. You know, it, it's definitely a, a, a play for me, especially if it's on the service. Manor Lords, let me tell you, this is a game that's not for me. I mean, it's it's what we used to call a really nerdy game back in the 80s. <laughs> I'm sorry for those of you who like this, this type of game. Civilization builds and all that stuff. Guys, uh, not for me, right? Um, but there's there's something for you. The one that I, I, I like the aesthetic, but I didn't understand the gameplay. Um, I don't know if it's because early in the morning, but I, I, we'll have to do some research on it would be Ikaro will not die and uh, it was pretty action-packed you know but I just um, I need to know more about the game I, I like the the color scheme for sure you know that cyberpunk the teal with the hot pink and, and the dark blues and the purples and all that definitely an aesthetic that I like I just don't understand the game you know and, and um, I got to see more about that one but but it is looks interesting Fair to the North, not for me. I just don't like that aesthetic. I, mean, I don't like the game. Spirit of North 2, this is a sequel. For those of you who like it, you know, God bless you, but uh, not for me. The one that I did like, and I'm going to play day one, for me, it's a, you know, a Gen X title, right? It's a Return to the Old Detroit, Robocop Rogue City. That's right. Loved it. Loved Robocop. Uh, always love the series. Uh, remember the first movie, <laughs> like the old old rap song said, <laughs> "RoboCop Two last year was a shock." <laughs> Man, that was a horrible sequel. But you know, uh, RoboCop Two is it's going to launch this November for the Xbox Series X and S. So I'll probably check it out there. And again, I'll put a, a link to their official wire so you guys can go check out these stories and go deeper into it. Now, let me say this. The next game I want to talk about, because I do, I found it a little bit interesting as far as, uh, as, far as RPGs on the gameplays. And then I saw something that has been a criticism in my mind now for RPGs, JRPGs for a long time. And I will make a sec separate video on it. And that is that um, the dungeons of uh, Hinterburg, they showed off some gameplay. And in the gameplay, there was a lot of type text. I think it's, it's um, time that, that we give these voice actors the opportunities to actually, uh, you know, <laughs> act their roles, you know, and have more voice actors in these games. Part of the reason, for example, say games like Persona and others are so loved is because people become attached to the characters and a lot of it is through voices I mean, these these actors become popular afterwards you know because they do such great performances and i think you you take away from the game by not having those so even though the gameplay seems interesting to me and it looks like an interesting story the fact that it doesn't have you know uh, voice acting prominently might be something for me just to step back from the game and maybe it's not going to be, um, you know, one of my first choices out, out the box. There's other, there's going to be other things to play, but I think they're, they're missing a great opportunity there. Now, one that did interest me, and especially not only because, of, you know, the gameplay, it's because of the aesthetic in the finals. Can you make it to the finals, right? I guess the game is called finals and it's, it's something, uh, you know, um, I don't know, so it's just going to be in teams or person versus person, but I like the, the, the fact that you have the narrator, it's more of a game show, you know, and you're, you're playing out there and then somebody's narrating gameplay. 
Not only that, if you guys look, when when some of the players lose, they turn into coins. That reminds me of, of Ready Player One, the movie, where you know some of the players would lose and they immediately would turn into coins that people would collect. I think that's a it's a great idea to to take, you know. Um, and I really like to see what this game is about. Um, and it's going to be, you know, apparently it's going to be it's a free to play free to play app. Uh, Jeez, free to play game. Sorry, it's too early in the morning for me. You have some more coffee here. My throat is ripped to shreds. It's free to play, and it's centered around virtual arenas, and um, it it really features some incredible destruction physics, guys. I really like that. Uh, look for more information coming this year, according to them. And the closed beta kicks off on October 26th, so look out for that. All right, guys, those are some of my first thoughts on this um, on this new partner preview that they had. I think it was very interesting. I think it, they should build on this. They should do more of this, highlight their partners, because, you know, it really inspires new developers to, to, to put games out there that uh, they know that the people that they're working with are, uh, you know, out, out there actually working hard to advertise them and to show off their work. And then the more people learn about uh, video games through different channels, hey, the better the sales are going to be, hopefully, and the more games we get. So there were some good things, you know, in the show. There's some things I didn't like, but hey, to each his own. What do you guys think? What did you like? Are you going to buy any of these? Are you going to wait for the Game Pass? What are you going to do? For me, I see a couple there that might be a day one for me. All right, humans, I will catch you on the next one. Take care.